Mr. Speaker. Uh, this is a split call, five minutes. I call Greg O'Connor. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. Um, Mr. Speaker, as a much younger man, I worked as an undercover police officer, which meant living among criminals and with them. And one thing I learned about prison was that a, quite a um, vulnerable time for me was when someone came out of prison. Because when these people came back into the scene that I was, they were the first one to recognise there was a new face there. Because they expected to come right back into the place that they had left. And they invariably did, and they invariably began their offending again. And that, even as a younger man, sowed the seed with me that we've really got to do better, that when people do come out, um, I often am a great believer that um, the fact of prison is as important as the length of the sentence, um, as, uh, as the certainty of capture is one of the most important things in crime prevention, making people believe they'll get caught, um, which is makes the uh, Labor Party policy of increasing the number of police by 1,800 um, a very positive one, because more and more people out there will believe they are going to get caught, and that will have a greater impact on the prison population than anything. But the other thing, um, Mr. Speaker, that uh, really I did learn is that um, when we send people to prison, there is a tendency to sort of treat them bad, um, lock them up. But one thing I believe, and this is not only in prison, but right through the justice sector, we've got to be better than them. Um, there is an expectation um, that when people do end up in prison, um, that it doesn't matter how badly treated they are. Actually, I disagree with that. I actually think they need to know um, that society, the society we expect them to come back to, the society that eventually they're going to end up back in, is actually a better place um, than the one they left to go to prison from. And that's when I look at the, uh, some of the provisions of this, um, particularly the way we treat those with mental health issues. Um, I think it's incredibly important um, that these, we understand that these people are coming back. Um, we are not going to go the way that uh, Louisiana did, um, where the greatest growth industry is geriatric prisons because they have such prescriptive sentencing that people who are no longer a threat to anyone, not even themselves, can never be released, um, even though they are often in dementia wards and the growth of dementia prisons, simply because that regime has gone down that path. We have to accept in New Zealand um, that we're not going to go that way, that the people are generally, um, although there has been some good work in identifying the people that shouldn't ever get back, but the most are going to come back into our society. So we've actually got to give them some tools to come back with. And that's why I look at um, some of the provisions of this Act. And just a little one, like the tattoos. Um, it was always a matter of pride um, to have your boob dots um, to be able to walk into any hotel um, and anyone could identify immediately which prison you'd been to um, by not only how many dots you'd had, that generally um, was commensurate with how many times you'd been to prison, but even just the shape of the dot, the shape of the star, where it was. Um, and it was actually like reading a, a DNA um, to actually be able to read someone's whole life in prison. And uh, hardly surprising um, that when you're in prison, you are locked away from society. And the mere fact that you're eventually going to have to walk in public um, with um, some unfortunate um, pieces of uh, tattoo art on your face, um, it's a long way away. So everything we do with people in prison, it's got to be actually making them or giving them the ability that when eventually we do release them, um, they've got at least some chance of having a go, having a success. And tattooing is one of them. Um, I'm pleased to see, I've been involved in the past myself, in having people remove one of the first things when people do start to go straight, um, get on the straight and narrow, is often removing tattoos, because nothing identifies them worse than that. Um, in the past, where I've actually had to um, help people um, who have um, re rehabilitated, getting, getting their tattoos taken off, uh, and the state have actually been quite good at that. So, actually, in prison, taking some steps to try and prevent the tattooing, it won't be easy. Um, anyone I've talked to, anyone who's been involved in the correction system will tell you it won't be easy, but at least um, having a goal to, and, and some, some um, methodology and, more importantly, some sanctions around trying to prevent that from happening, again, helping that when these people do go out, the chances of them reoffending will be reduced, um, because that, is, again, is the only way we're going to manage to do so. Because at the moment, um, and one of the other unfortunate parts of this Act um, is that we're going to enable, it's about enabling police cells to be used um, for 
overflow prisons, overflow prisoners. And I do remember walking into the Waitakere Henderson Police Station um, one occasion when uh, it was full of. Thank Order you. the Speaker. member's time has expired. Uh, Mr. Speaker. I call Todd Muller. Uh, thank you, Mr. Uh, Mr.